Maura just wrapping up this investigation and uh, came across this James Bruce. James Bruce of Canad. Um, about 1730, right? Um, so like 1700s type of idea, right? So it's not too old ago, right? And the uh, Scottish traveller who confirmed the source. Of course, travellers go it again, you know, for the trans. But they uh, confirmed the source of the Blue Nile, right? So now basically how the Nile is basically the line which again refers to the uh, injections and that feed. And he spent more than a dozen years in North Africa and Ethiopia. Again, Ethiopian eunuch idea, right? In 1770, nice bit of good, became first European to trace origins of the Blue Nile from Egypt and Sudan, right? Of course, Egypt is, you know, totally uh, biblical, yeah, one of the settings of the Bible and that, right? And there, of course, from Harrow School, like, you know, they're not from Eton, they're from Harrow, like, and these stuff, you know what I mean? And John Lyon, of course, see, on the air uh, badge, the two little arrows, which is BSC as syringes, right? And there, uh, so basically, this uh, character, right? I mean, yeah, of course, assuming that actually existed now, this Tyrius, yeah. was he yeah, apparently out in Africa, right? And basically one of the first Europeans to go over to Africa and sort of map out the, yeah, the Nile River, as they call it, and all that, right? So they sort of, you know, like, like I see a thing of the type of history, but they give you, you know, thousands of years old stuff. This is going back to, you know, six, seventeen hundreds. So that's only like 300 years ago, type of thing. He's one of, you know, murdered as one of the first Europeans to go out in Africa, map it all out and all that, you see? Of course, Dean uh, 777 there, right? Yeah. Portrait of Bruce. Of course, in order to use the Bruce name to this dearly, like, you know, with having the, uh, the Bruce, uh, Fiona Bruce, on the antique virtue, for example. <laughs> you know what I mean? The course newsreader. Hex. So, um, so this is a pops given a, a, you know, could, but how, you know, really how old it's been when the, the Europeans went into Africa, right? Because it seems like a lot of stuff comes out of Africa in terms of influences and all that. Of course, nice 11 for the year to Masonic Pillars idea, right? Here's no one with Mongoo Park. Yeah, you know, like assuming this is a real character. Because, yeah, plenty of suggested, isn't it? But, again, Scottish explorer of West Africa. He travels in the interior districts of Africa and theorized Niger and Congo emerged to become the same river. A little bit of code there, the merged idea, right? And there. It is very funny stuff. But you know, again from that similar type of period. You know, the um, early late seventeen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds, we of course could be a bit of a con in the congo, you know. Bit of a congo and on in the congo type of idea, right? And then the African Association was the beginning. Or the age of African explorations, eh? So that was around about 1700 to 1800. Which, uh, you know what I mean? That's a bit more realistic in terms of, uh, you know, 
currents than the sort of all the garbage they give you put in the ancient civilization, see? And he has an interesting piece of stuff, right? the association for promoting discovery of the interior parts of Africa, known as the African Association, found in London, 9th of June, 1788. That's like a free idea, 1888. And the British club dedicated the exploration of West Africa. According to this, the mission of discovering the origin and course of the Niger River, right? Which, you know, I mean, that doesn't sound right, you know, why would you want to discover the origin and course of a river? But this idea about the Timbuktu, obviously this is like an air, uh, went down in the um, folklore and mythology, kind of the lost city of Gould, right? So there could be a lot of good in this uh, idea, like the Timbuktu, you know, the tin. In the air, got to be something to do with, you know, the beginning of the age of African exploration. And maybe there's a lot of there's campaigns out of Africa. This doesn't really do with the uh, tea juice, you know, the tea juice. And no one here, Sir Joseph Banks, patron of natural sciences. And they're the age of enlightenment, so you know. This to me seems a lot more realistic in terms of, uh, you know, cool, because think about that, the age of enlightenment. So see, you know, know how to consider enlightenment being uh, pumped up with age use of a syringe. So, you know, 17th and 18th centuries, I mean, I had the uh, syringes, you know, so a spot on type of time. And a lot more realistic than some of the, uh, the supposedly ancient garbage, what they're trying to, uh, Pass off his proper history, read. So again, from this similar period, time period, and, and they remember how they gone on about Banksy, the deer, you know, Banksy is supposed to be, you know, something good or whatever, you know. The baronet with the, yeah. Uh, there's the red hand, you know, the red hand. So obviously in there, you know, the blood there, uh, a blood ch uh, changer, you know, a syringe user. Water the bath again, the bath, the trans bath, and there, uh, president of the Royal Society, so in order to be president of it, you had to be a proper uh, in with them, right, you know, proper tea uh, drinker. And the botanist idea, which is, um, you know, to deal with making portions of the plants and all that. So again, you know, a lot of tea good in this. And this one, they um, took part in Captain James Cook's first great voyage. Of course, the James Cook idea is totally legendary, you know, as an explorer and all that type of caper. Some would even say it could be the Jesus Christ idea, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, I think that's got to be King James there. Which it could be, the King James Cook could even be the uh, King James, you know what I mean? You never know with this stuff. But yeah, uh, again, all this stuff, instrumental in, um, you know, discovering new lands and uh, Africa and all this cave, I see. And this brung about the age of enlightenment. So, you know, the, uh, the idea of visiting these foreign lands and that somehow created an age of enlightenment which impacted upon uh, the European lands. See what I mean? So, you talking about, you know, what did the discovery there like? And there, bringing 30,000 plant specimens, you know. So obviously they, they, you know, the creation of portions and that, to put a lot of stuff in. Experiment with all different portions and what have you. Alma Mater, Christ Church, Oxford. And the botany base, I like the bot idea. 
Not a, a bot. Banksia. Yeah, that was going on about Banksy and I'm thinking paintings and that. And recognised by characteristic flower spikes. So they wonder they like this particular plant because it looks like a needle's thing, you see. They love that transcurrent like. The ear ear. <laughs> A lot of good in this one, like William Hyde Wollaston, the Mongo of Parks, and William Hyde Wollaston. Of course, looking like a young lass there. And there's the SS again. Long neck. It's a twelve trans eh? Oh, I in college. He went how do you <laughs> One of their little uh, trans boys then. It's very not nice. loads of good in this. He matriculated at Christ Church. Marked and the Black Lives Matter, he matriculated. And look at this. Mm. An awful lot of good, eh? And the penguins, black and white. Of course, you know, this stuff very, uh, very instrumental, like I would say, in the discovery of trans air medicine, the bringing back of trans medicine to Europe. You know, and then the rest is history, like literally, you know what I mean? The rest is history. And the story of the serpent, <laughs> see what I'm saying? History. Hamilton Mortimer. It's like end of, isn't it? That's what I'm seeing there. These these were out there, collected, you know, somewhere. Well, you got the plants, flowers, probably had their interactions with an um, African tribe and that, right? Who basically introduced them to the uh, trans medicine, right? And then they basically took it back to Europe and uh, started using it, like something like that, anyway. You know what I mean? Simon's town. And the transit of Venus. Classic piece of good, eh? The endeavour. The endeavour to bring trans medicine back to Europe. Certainly a lot of trans good. We're all taking place, say, around the boot 1700s. You know, so, uh, I mean, even that, they could, you know, could be manipulating like the uh, times, of course. It seems to me like the whole thing, the trans program and that seemed to, to come from, you know, 1600s going into 1700s. Of course, the Bible is the story of basically the first uh, type of trans ideas, isn't it? So again, with the Bible, you could be talking about publication in 1611, or you could be, you know, talking about another hundred years on top of that. You know, obviously, I'll, you know, can't trust a word what to tell you in that. It seems like yeah, it's very much all of the with trans. That's for sure. Also, Royal Botanic Gardens, it's just, you know, Q. Breadfruit. 
colonizations.